Sparks is brought to you by Whirlpool Corporation, Findlay Division, and by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation. New 6 is brought to you by this station and by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation. Today on News 6, we'll visit a part of Indian culture. We'll watch a man make rocks into jewelry and take a look at some tiny horses. Hi, and welcome to News 6. I'm Susan Smersall from St. Anthony's School in Columbus Grove, Ohio. Here with our first story is Ann Stecksholte. Most kids have played cowboys and Indians at one time or another. Most kids want to be the cowboys. Not too many wanted to be the Indians. One man who lives in Columbus Grove liked Indians so much, he built his own totem pole and placed it in his backyard. Have you ever seen a totem pole? Not too many people have, especially in Columbus Grove. But Gary Ostetter has built his own 16-foot high totem pole. Gary took an old telephone pole, spent two years carving the pole by hand, How did you get started building the totem pole? I got the idea for making the totem pole when I was in the Boy Scouts about 30 years ago. I uh, acquired a telephone pole from a local farmer whose uh, field they were taking poles out of and brought it home, started the project two years ago. Uh, I had about two years in the process of carving the pole, but I didn't work all the time. I worked off and on. And when the weather was too hot, I didn't work. And when the weather was too cold, I didn't work. The symbols are actually symbols of the various tribes on the uh, Pacific coast. The top symbol is a uh, thunderbird. The next symbol is the raven. The third symbol down is an eagle. And the last symbol is a bear. Oh, my family thinks the totem pole's great. I've got a lot of notoriety out of it. Personally, I have a sneaky feeling that the totem pole cause all the rain that we've been having. This week's show is produced by Margaret Stecksholm, sixth grade class from St. Anthony School in Columbus Grove, Ohio. Columbus Grove is located about 12 miles north of Lima in Putman County. The town was founded in 1842 and its present population is around 2,300 people. Now here's Lisa Schrader with a diamond in the rough. When News 6 went out to visit this next story, we thought we would find the road pretty rocky. But then this story turned into a gem. Let's meet a true rock hound, Walter Harshman. Walter Harshman, better known as Zeke, is a lavatory artist. He makes beautiful jewelry from rocks. Some of his rocks came from volcanoes. Most of his rocks come from Australia and East Africa. When he gets raw rocks, he places them in a tumbler and spins them with water for t about 10 days. Then he adds grit and spins them for three more days. Now they are ready to be made into beautiful creations. I don't think I ever met a child yet that did like a pretty rock. I bet you them kids out there would like come out here and watch me make a piece of jewelry one time or other. In fact, I think most of them could put their fingers in it and do it themselves. We find a rough rock. We want to make a piece of jewelry. You take it to a slab saw or a trim saw. This is slab saw or a trim saw, either one.
So the next time you come along a pebble on the road, don't kick it away. Someone like Zeke could transform it into beautiful joy. for Kids View, a weekly feature in which kids get to tell people their thoughts. This week's question is if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? And it was submitted by Jeff Titos. Here's what you had to say. I would like to go to Italy to see my ancestors. I'd like to go to California to walk on the beaches and swim in the ocean. I would like to go to Hawaii to see the volcanoes. I would like to go to Point Barrow, Alaska. I would like to go to Texas to live on a large ranch. I'd like to go to Greece to see the Parthenon. I would like to go to China and see the Great Wall. I would like to go to Rome to see St. Peter's Basilica. I would like to go to France to see the Notre Dame Cathedral. I would like to go to Switzerland to see the Alps. You've heard of mini skirts, mini vans, maybe even mini mouse, but have you ever heard of or seen many horses. Ma Bob McDowell sees miniature horses every day. He and his family raise them. Bob McDowell has raised miniature horses for three years. A registered miniature horse cannot exceed the height of 34 inches when fully grown. These horses have all the characteristics and confirmation of a full-size horse, but only in miniature. Miniature horses were initially bred in the 16th century for English royalty. The horses were brought into the United States during the 1930s because they were just the right size to pull coal carts out of the coal mines. The miniature horse has definitely made a hoof mark in history, and Bob McDowell has a small role in keeping miniature horses small indeed. That's all for this week's show. We hope to see you again next week on News 6.